Hello everybody, hope that you are doing very well and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where we are going to be diving into what we absolutely love together and that is trading the Bitcoin charts. I'm going to be going over the next support and resistance level on this chart. A little bit of an update I suppose since our live stream on Friday. Shout out to the legend Igor, now part of the chart champions team and you know how this has progressed going on to how it is progressing next. Uh, so I hope that you, yeah, really enjoy the video. Let's get into this. And uh, without further said or do, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. So as we all know, we kind of were aware of this little range that we were in on Friday night's live stream, talking about the potential, obviously, of rejecting off of around the CC zone, of course, up and around this high here as well. In the end, we can see we did put in, you know, a bit of a failed auction. I would refer to this as move above the high. I will show you some of the resistances that we bashed into, actually, um, because some of these, not everybody, I think, would have been able to recognize. Uh, we obviously hit into the value area high. OK, so you can see this labeled here very clearly. This is our current trading range value area high. So we came into that. We also had some nice speed fan resistances as well coming into this. We actually had a, you know almost a triple uh, <laughs> triple whammy up at the top there, to be honest with you. As you can see, the seven fives lining up here all over, you know, all on top of each other. That's the one from the all time high. And that's obviously the one from the high that was made on the 7th of September coming in together to form, obviously, on the value area high on the two speed fans. If you come down here on even a lower term time frame, you can see it very clearly, really come up into that level and obviously in the end got a rejection. Those are the levels that I was going through in last night's Champions live stream, just pe making people aware this is the resistance that we are at right now. Obviously, we knew the fact that we had a CME gap down below us as well. So obviously, when you're trading up here, you have to remember there is the CME gap below you. And obviously, in the end, when I hide off of this analysis again, I'm just going to hide this, hide this, hide this. I've explained why we rejected where we did. And obviously, that then gives us our lo more local parallel channel. OK, so our sideways type of range. And obviously, we, we we did drop down. We have, obviously, there is no CME gap anymore. There's no CME gap. So it was kind of a fake. We, you know, we can refer to this now very clearly that it was in the end a fake out of the range you know, just before the CME opens, then obviously you, you drop that down just for the CME open as well. And then this is where, you know, if you didn't short the highs, which again, I, I want to stress to everybody, you do not need to be shorting the exact high or long in the exact low. You can get in after steps of confirmation, e.g. a higher probability trade. You do not need to be the hero on these types of moves. You really, really don't. And obviously what we can see here in the end is we had our drop, OK, and we obviously then got a little bit of a rally to the upside. And what you rallied into was obviously your VWAP. And this is this for me was I mean, here is a lot clearer because this is was posted. Um, yeah, literally like last night. So the the chart's very clear and you can see very clearly here how we had support, support, move to the upside, rejecting off of our speed fans and our value area highs, dropping back down below. And then this is what we could call like a very high probability trade because we have then seen the trap longs outside of the move. OK, we've come back into our brilliant level of which has flipped from support into resistance. And it's also in confluence with around the old previous highs. So at that point, you have to be thinking to yourself, you know, you know, this is a fairly, uh, this is a, this is a, you know, you might not necessarily expect such a massive reaction off of it, but for the local term timeframes, for at least like a kind of a day trade, this is obviously a very acceptable short position in my opinion. OK, obviously we come back into that and you can see I don't know whether I just showed you here, but you can see we come back into this if we've got with your confluences of around the channel high. And obviously during the night, we have made our way down once more to around the middle of this channel. And let me just highlight this very clearly. So we can see the way that I've drew this channel is basically attaching the uh, wicks of the highs here. OK, and bringing it down to the overall low that was made of our of our consolidation. What I really liked about this channel, because I have tried two different channel pools, one from here and one from here. And I like this one more because we can see the middle of this channel is extremely well respected with this support, 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 support. So e.g. the middle of the channel is very important. So the, what, the way that I would personally, uh, you know, uh, advise, not advise, I suppose, no financial advice. The way that I would personally be trading these type of things is if we have got into our short off the channel high, which once again was, you know, a fairly well respected level of resistance that we had yesterday. This is obviously a very nice take profit one because it's the middle of the channel, which has definitely been well respected prior. So this is a sensible take profit one. And obviously you can be looking down for around the channel lows. OK, so that could be your overall trade. Take profit one, looking for 
the bottom of the channel. Okay, what could be the invalidation or what is the invalidation of this trade? Obviously, if you hit a take profit one and price actually ends up finding support around here and bouncing to the upside, you know, think for this for a second. If you have shorted here and you have hit a take profit one here, your target's only here. You're probably locking in about 50, 60% profits here. And if you are getting stopped out, yeah, you're, you, you get stopped on the rest of the trade. Is that a losing trade? Well, the answer is no, that would be a winning trade. Okay, so for a trader that has managed to short the top of the channel, hit a take profit one, and then the stop loss is hit, that is a winning trade. Why? Because you've hit a take profit, moved your stop loss to entry, Anything that's triggered on the uh, anything that's triggered on a stop loss is 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 you know at break even. You've already secured your profits from the take profit one. If you obviously if this does drop down even more, you make even more profits off of the short. But the, this is the thing that you want to get into your mind frame. It's it's the mind frame of you know it's the mindset of you know I am happy to come in here every day, take a trade. If I hit a take profit one and a stop loss, hey, this is this is this is fine because I think lots of people are in the mindset that they need to make a load of money really quickly. They're like, oh, I need to make massive gains. I need to do this. I need to do that. It's it's the wrong mindset to be in. Honestly, if you really want to make it as a trader, you need to be under the mindset of slow, consistent gains. Yeah, if you can pick up one percent here, half a percent here, two percent here, you're you're content. Yeah, every little bit helps, and it's you need to be in the mindset of hit a take profit one and, and then let the rest of the trade ride. Maybe it does go down lower. Maybe it comes and stops you out. It kind of leaves you in a very advantageous position where you are under the mindset or, or the thought process here of, hey, I've secured my profits. I've secured my money. Let, let, let's see what happens next. Now, let's see what happens next. If it comes down lower, I've got another trade. If it reverses on me, I'm out of the trade and I'll look for another one. OK, so I think this is a very important like uh, way to, way to think. Mm, people struggle with it. Yeah, I, I kind of make this sound easy. People struggle with that. I know 100 percent. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so that obviously gives us our local trading channel. So that that, that would be support. So obviously, you could see sort of uh, just like you saw a fail, failed auction of this. You can obviously see such failed auctions of the lows. But we're seeing support there at about 40, 44,000. Let's just say 44,500 pretty important support. And obviously, the intraday uh, resistance coming in there about 48,400. So about you know that sort of you know little barrier that we have here of support and resistance. Obviously, if we break to the upside of the channel, we're going to be looking up towards, you know, back towards 50,000. If we break to the lower side of the channel, well, we're going to be looking back down towards our old area of consolidation. So moving back down towards $45,000, dollars But this is the way that I would like to trade this on the intraday, e.g. intraday. I have my intraday resistances. I have my intraday supports. These offer scalp trades. Yeah, you do not need to time exact highs. You do not need to time exact lows. You can wait for deviations. You can wait for the confirmation. And, and you know, you're getting in on high probability trades. And that's what you want. You don't want to be a gambler. You want to wait for the high probabilities. And, um, you know, if, 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 if Bitcoin is a little bit slow for you, because I acknowledge even for myself, Bitcoin is fairly slow. I'm getting maybe one or two trades a day, sometimes no trades. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very slow paced on Bitcoin at the moment. And that for me personally is still because there is just insane amount of opportunity, obviously, on the altcoins shout out obviously to Tezos, which is another coin that I continue to trade uh, because this thing is just absolutely, absolutely insane. So it's kind of the recognize the environment that you're in. If Bitcoin is only offering one or two trades, well, guess what? You, ha you have a thousand different altcoins to trade sort of thing. So uh, for me personally, I'm still absolutely loving the Tezos trades. This thing is like an absolute goldmine right now. Very well respected technicals. Uh, and that's all the main thing that you care about, no? So yeah, like th this is what I just want to emphasize. Like, if Bitcoin is a little bit slow for you, is a little bit slow for me at times, especially over the past few weeks, that you know, look at altcoins. Yeah, the altcoins are, are really nice to trade. You know, off the top of my head, Tezos is, is number one period right now. It's just insanely amazing. Obviously, I'm trading that against Tether on, on Bybit, of course. But um, yeah, there's a, there's a hundreds of different alts to look at. But um, yeah, I want to I would just wanted to make this a short and sweet video. If you have enjoyed the analysis that I've given you here, absolutely smash that like button as hard as you can. Hulk smash it, bam, and uh, turn that like blue. And that's a nice way of saying thank you uh, for me taking my time to do this video for you. So I would thoroughly appreciate that. Um, all I will say is, uh, yeah, final words. Trade the range until it breaks. Uh, you do not need to be heroes timing exact highs or exact lows. Of course, we do know, you know, we, we know the reasons why we rejected where we did. Uh, shout out to the speed fans of Barry Area Highs. It really did kind of capture this high. Inconfluence, 
uh, you know, remember CMEs, you know, we did have the CME gap, so this is another thing to remember, but again, you do not need to be timing these highs, you can get in, on my opinion, of, of areas such as the retest of the channels, if this is a deviation, retesting the channel, you know, you're retesting your resistances you're also getting in on support resistance slips so you're seeing three to four different confluences to short this you know, you've got to take the trade it you know i've all i will always say this it doesn't matter what you think it doesn't matter what you say it doesn't matter what anybody says the only thing that matters is the charts and if you are truly trading the charts for what they are you've got to take the shorts when they're there you've got to take the longs when they're there yeah at the end of the day the worst thing that will happen is you lose the trade that's your stop loss hit it's really not the end of the world. It's part of trading. If you take a loss, analyze it, work out what went wrong and move on to the next trade. Yeah, simple as that. You've got to approach this game as a robot looking for consistency over time. That's the way that you profit. That's the way that you succeed. And champions, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I'm going to say thank you ever so much. Uh, obviously, if you want to see more, I done a whole over, a, I think the live stream last night was an hour and 20, 30 minutes long. Uh, that was obviously for the champions, chartchampions.com. So if you want to see more in-depth, much more advanced analysis, cover that for the champions. If you want all the educational material, that's obviously for the contenders. If you just like to hang around and say hi, this is what the public YouTube videos are for. Hope you have thoroughly enjoyed. As always, got to end with the disclaimer. No financial advice, unfortunately, for people. Uh, just an entertainment educational video only. And I hope that you are being educated with these videos. So have a brilliant day, everybody. Smash the likes, say hello, and boom. CC, Paul, send their regards. Thank you ever so much and goodbye.